We're given velocity as a function of time along with an initial condition. We're given it in symbolic form, but this is a calculator question. And so we're allowed to simply put this function into y1 in our calculator. And then we're asked to answer questions about acceleration, speed, position, maxima. So the formulas I think you'll find useful are these. And with that, let's just jump in. The first part asks for acceleration at time t equals 2. Well, acceleration at time t equals 2 is simply asking about the slope of the velocity curve, the slope of the tangent line of the velocity curve at t equals 2. And so we can approximate that numerically. I've already put this function in the calculator and so all that's left is for us to simply invoke the numerical derivative function our variable is x our function is y1 and we're evaluating it at x equals 2 since we used x as our variable in lieu of t. We get negative 0 0.1329 and I'll just write a little explanation. The slope of the tangent line to the velocity curve at t equals 2. And in parentheses, I'll just say that I evaluated it numerically. I use four digits again, as I've mentioned in other videos, just because it guarantees that I have adequate accuracy to meet the criteria of the graders. Part B wants to know whether the speed of the particle is increasing or decreasing. And you'll recall from this table that that means that we need to know both the velocity of the particle and the acceleration of the particle at t equals 2. Well, we've already found the acceleration. So we'll just say we first find v of 2, which is approximately equal to. Here, I'm just evaluating the function because the function that we put in was the velocity function. So it simply needs to be evaluated at time t equals 2. And I get negative 0 0.4362. Again, evaluated numerically. Now I can use this table because both the velocity and the acceleration are less than zero. Speed is increasing. Part C. Now they want us to find a kind of maximum. This particle, I don't think I mentioned previously, but unlike the typical problem where the particle moves from left to right or right to left along the x-axis, this particle actually moves up and down along the y-axis. And so highest point corresponds to largest positive value. When does the position reach its largest positive value? is really the, uh, the question being asked.
Okay. And we just say that the uh, places to consider for the position reaching its largest positive value are the endpoints in this case t equals zero only because t goes on for infinity and when v of t changes from positive to negative. as t increases. For that, it's helpful to know a little bit about the graph that we're considering. Uh, let's think about this function. When is this going to equal zero? Well, this tan inverse, now this is not something I would put on the AP exam, but remember what tan inverse, or what the tan function looks like tan function looks like this, okay, with asymptotes at pi over 2 and multiples of it, integer multiples of it. And therefore, tan inverse, so here's tan. Tan inverse looks like the principal branch of this turned on its side, okay? Namely, we're going from negative to positive values, negative pi over 2 to a height of pi over 2 as we go from negative infinity in the time to positive infinity in the time. So here's tan inverse of t. So if you think about what 1 minus that looks like, it starts out at some number above 1, and then here it goes through 0. And then shortly thereafter, it reaches a value that is equal to 1, and then goes just a little bit, or equal to 0, and then just goes a little bit below that. And so the curve basically looks like this the velocity versus time curve. Again, it's just 1 minus this curve, and so that looks like this. And so what we can see is that the end point at t equals 0, we have some position, but then we immediately add positive signed area to that position. So the end point can't be a maximum. Thus, it's this first and only place where v of t equals 0 that it crosses from positive to negative. It's the only time it happens because this function, once it crosses over, just reaches an asymptote at uh, 1 minus pi over 2. And so this is the only critical point. That helps to guide us in our graphing so you may have to fiddle a little bit with the window. Here's the window that I ended up choosing after a little bit of thinking and experimentation. And so what we're after is finding this point. The position at time t equals 0 is at negative 1, and then we add positive area, because this is the velocity versus time curve, until we get to this point. So this question really comes down to simply finding out where this point is, where we cross the x-axis, or more specifically the t-axis. And so we can just calculate the zero. We 
we know it occurs somewhere after time t equals zero, so we'll put that in. And from this graph, visually, we can see that a right bound is 1. And we always make our right bound the same as our left, uh, the same as our guess. That gives us a 0 of t equals 0 0.4430. So we can now enter that. Uh, there is only one I'm going to change. Sorry. So there is only one critical point. At t approximately equal to zero point, what did we say that number was? Zero point four four three zero. Where velocity changes from plus to minus. Okay, so finally part D. What's the position of the particle at t equals 2? Okay, well that's the initial position plus the signed area under the velocity curve. So for that we need to use the numerical integration and we'll go to go to that oh I'm sorry I was here invoking it inside the graph that's not what we want so let's find numerical integration And we need to go from 0 to 2. We're integrating or finding the signed area under the velocity curve. Fortunately, we put that in as y1. And as always, instead of using t for time, we used x. So that's how much signed area gets added, but we have to add that to the initial position, which is at time t equals 0. That's given to us as negative 1. So that's negative 0 0.3606. Let's write it like this. Uh, position at time at t equals position at 0 plus the signed area from 0 to 2 of the velocity function with respect to time. This is negative 1 plus, I keep forgetting what that approximation is, negative 0 0.3606. Position at 2 equals negative 1.3606, evaluating numerically. So we'll say it's approximately that. Now the more curious question comes up, is the particle moving toward the origin or, the, or away from the origin? Well, here the analogy with speed is complete. Namely, we can use this very same chart, but move one over. Namely, instead of velocity, we have position. Instead of position, we have velocity. And the speed corresponds to the absolute value of the position, namely the distance. This question is really asking whether the distance from the origin is increasing 
or decreasing. If the distance from the origin is increasing, then the particle is moving away from the origin. If it's decreasing, it's moving towards the origin. And so what we'll say is, uh, because P of 2 is less than 0 and V of 2 is less than 0, particle is moving away from the origin.